Good morning on this uh, Saturday in the 13th week of Ordinary Time. Uh, today we get to the conclusion of the book of Amos. Uh, briefly, uh, the book of Amos is one of the oldest uh, prophetic uh, traditions uh, in our Old Testament. One of our first uh, prophetic books. Part of the, the, the minor collection of, of prophets, there's 12 of them. Uh, minor in the sense that they're just shorter in length uh, compared to the major ones of Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Daniel, where there's over 40 to 50 chapters of those books. Uh, these, these minor prophets have, you know, one chapter to maybe 15 at most. Um, so Amos is one of the, the oldest of our prophetic traditions. Uh, he was a person from the southern kingdom, from Judah, where Jerusalem and the temple is, uh, who though preached to those in the northern kingdom. Okay, remember the northern kingdom is the one that set up its own liturgical system, um, and it's the one that also uh, falls first by the Assyrians in 722 B.C., he preached about 750, 760 BC, so about 40 years before it's, uh, before it's demise. At that time, the Northern Kingdom was very affluent, uh, doing very well, at least the leaders were, um, in terms of their economic and, and political sense. Uh, they didn't have much pressure around them, and so they were enjoying a time of peace and prosperity. But as we know, especially people living in America, uh, priests and prosperity uh, can also lead to spiritual laziness. And that's what was going on there. Um, neglectful of the poor. Again, so as, as the rich were enjoying their, their benefits and their lifestyles, um, those below them were often neglected. And also their worship and their dedication from God was lacking. Uh, because, again, uh, we as humans, we tend to go to God and rely on God on times of crisis. You know, when things are bad, then, then, then we pray to God. But when things are good, eh, we're not as, not as uh, uh, dedicated to our prayer, not as dedicated to our faithfulness. We're relying on the things that we have that make us, quote unquote, comfortable. And so Amos, throughout this book, um, is really preaching a day, first of all, condemning their, their, their lackadaisical worship, condemning their neglectful of the poor, uh, but also then predicts upcoming doom and destruction for the Northern Kingdom, as we know will happen 40 years later. Just imagine the people listening at that time, they can't imagine their lifestyle changing. You know, they, they, can't, they can't imagine with all the, the calmness and peace around them, they can't imagine this happening. And so many of them either don't take him seriously or they want to condemn him, you know, as, as we hear uh, in the book. But Amos predicts that it will be a, be a day where, where you will lose everything. Um, now, in today's first reading, as with many of our prof prophetic books, you always have that, that theme of the prophet calling out the, the sins, the wrongdoings of the people, the judgment, okay, and the punishment, and then restoration, okay? That, that's the prophetic theme that we're going to hear over the next couple of weeks, uh, calling out sin, the punishment and judgment, and then the restoration, always in those three parts. Okay, that's why I always, always hate it when, when people call the, the God of the Old Testament the, the mean God or the, the God of, of vengeance. Um, he's also the God of promise and restoration. And in fact, he's even more so uh, a promise and restoration in the Old Testament. Um, so today's first reading, again, the conclusion, the very last lines of the book of Amos. God is going to remove the things that make us comfortable, but also less reliant on him. Um, because he, he's the source of our life. He's the source of our joy, our peace, our consolation. It's going to be us and him for all eternity. You know, that's, that's our destination. 
and we're called to live that out right now. We're called to prepare ourselves, you know, um, in, in this way. Um, and when we don't do that, when we're attached um, to our material things, we're attached to our, you know, apparent prosperity, apparent peace. The way that God is going to save us is he's going to remove it from us, <laughs> you know, um, he's going to remove it for us. And restore us with something, not the same, but restore with something better. And, that, and that's the last part of, 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 this, of this reading. It's always been an understanding amongst the, the Jewish people, um, even, up to, even up to the, to the time of Jesus, that the restoration of the kingdom is going to be something different and better than what it used to be. Okay, They don't know what it's going to look like. Okay, Jesus is going to show us what it looks like. But they know that God's restoration is not just going back to the things of old, but it's a newness and something that is enhanced, something better than it was before. May God bless you.